Hello everyone, so today I'm going to be looking at cultural variations in attachment. I'm following along with the AQA psychology textbook for A-level, year one and AS with the green haired girl on. So the things you need to know and be able to recognise, I've included your AQA specification point, which is cultural variations in attachment, including Van Eisendorn. Now you must know this Van Eisendorn study because it is on the specification. It means you can also specifically get asked a question on Van Eisendorn. It might be the findings or the procedure. So you need to be able to recognize those, but it could be the study generally. So you might need to report both the procedure and the findings. You also see in your textbook that you have other studies of cultural variations. So you have the Simonella et al study, which is the Italian one, and you have the Korea study, which is June et al. Now those are not essential like the Van Eisendorn is, but if you had an essay style question come up and you needed A01 marks, you would be expected to include Van Eisendorn, I would say, as your main part of A01. But if you felt like you needed another study, you would use one of the those two. I wouldn't suggest using both. So first of all, we'll have a look at this key study of Van Eisendon in terms of the procedure. So Van Eisendon and Kronenberg, 1988, conducted a study to look at attachment type across different countries. So they conducted 32 studies in eight countries using the strange situation to investigate infants with different attachment types. They also looked at the differences within the same countries to get an idea of variations within a culture in terms of attachment type. So there were 32 studies in total. Now of the 32 studies, 15 of them were conducted in the USA and 1,990 children were tested in total. And this study is a meta-analysis because what it's doing is combining results from a number of studies on a particular topic, in this case, attachment types, to provide an overall view of the different types we're seeing. So if we now have a look at Van Eisendorn findings, you will see that I've included on the right hand side the graph of the results, the findings, and it shows you clearly the secure, insecure avoidant and insecure resistant findings. So in all of the countries, secure attachment was the most common. You can see that because the green is the largest on all of those different countries. Now, the second most prevalent in Western countries was insecure avoidant. So if you look at Great Britain and the United States, you can see that the orange colour is the next biggest after secure. And then the second most prevalent in non-Western countries was insecure resistant. So if you look at Japan, the red is the second largest after the secure. And similarly with Israel, the red is the second largest after the secure. And differences within cultures was greater than differences between cultures, that was a key finding, and variations within cultures were 150% greater than those between cultures. So, for example, if you think about the USA, there were 15 studies conducted there, but one of the studies in the USA, in one of them, 46% were securely attached, whilst in another one in the USA, 90% were securely attached. Now, in the last four bullet points here, you'll see that I've put some key findings. This is because there were some multiple choice questions that came up one year on the exam and students had to pick out which one was correct from a question. So Germany has the highest insecure avoidant. So it was something like which country had the highest insecure avoidant attachment type and the answer is Germany. If you look at the graph on your right hand side you can see that avoidant insecure avoidant is the biggest on that is the second highest israel has the highest insecure resistant you can see the red is the biggest on that one china has the same level of insecure avoidant and insecure resistant they're equal on china and insecure avoidant was the least common in japan so you can see that as well on the graph now, if you look at the other studies of cultural variations, these ones are going to be the ones that you're wanting to use as A01 marks in an essay. So Simonella et al. compared attachments in Italy to previous research conducted in Italy. So they conducted their own research and then compared it to research from the past. 
So they assessed 70 12-month-olds using the strange situation. They found 50% were secure and 36% were insecure avoidant. And the level of secure attachment is lower than what has been found in those previous studies they were comparing to. And the reason why they thought this could be is that the increasing number of mothers now of very young children working longer hours and using professional childcare. So therefore, cultural changes can affect attachment types. The other study that we'll look at is Genetel. So they compared attachment in Korea to other studies. Using the strange situation, they found of those who were deemed to be insecurely attached, all of them but one were insecure resistant. So we can see that the majority are insecure resistant, but the one who wasn't also did have an insecure avoidant attachment type. So they were insecure, but it was avoidant as opposed to resistant. And this is a similar distribution of attachment type found in Japan from the Van Eisendorn and Krunenberg study. So what we can say here is that there is a similarity between Japan and Korea, which can be explained by child rearing style. Now these are both non-Western cultures. What you've got to think about is that the method that was being used, Ainsworth's strange situation, she is an American researcher and it's based on a British theory by Bowlby and they were being imposed, so it's called imposed ethic, onto these other countries and therefore this is why we might be classifying Japan as having higher resistant attachment types and similarly Korea as well. So this is a limitation that we will look at. So from this, we can draw some conclusions that secure attachment tends to be the norm. This is supportive because Bowlby's idea of attachment is that it's innate and universal, and this type is the universal norm. But the research shows that cultural practices have an influence on attachment type. So we've now jumped over to your evaluation, your AO3 marks, and we're first of all going to look at this strength, and that is large samples. So if you look at the research, the researchers are combining results of attachment studies. And what that means is that you end up with a large sample. So if you think about Van Eisendorn's study, it's a meta-analysis, and there was nearly a total of 2,000 babies and their primary attachment figures, and that's relatively large. And also, the studies by Simon Ellertel and Jean Etel had large comparison groups from the previous research. So even though their own research samples were small, they were comparing against a lot of previous research. So sample size, it does have a strength because it allows high internal validity. That is, are we measuring what we're intending to measure? And it also reduces the impact of anomalous results caused by poor methodology or very unusual participants. However, on the other hand, we have samples tend to be unrepresentative of culture, and this is a limitation. So if you think about the Van Eisendorn and Krunenberg study, they claim to study cultural variations, but they actually looked at differences between countries and not specific cultures. So within countries, there are many different cultures. So, for example, a sample from one country may overrepresent people living in poverty, and this may result in different child rearing practices as a result of the stress of living in poverty. So, if you think of a country and then researchers going in and conducting attachment studies in a particular area, and they happen to pick an area where there is a lot of people living in poverty and their child rearing style is different to if you went to another area in the same country that was wealthier, so more affluent area, so in terms of having more money, there might be different child rearing practices there. But what was being compared with Van Eisendorn in Cronenberg was they would just do, for instance, a study in a country and then compare it against another country. But actually, that study might not be very representative of the whole entire country. It might just overrepresent people living in poverty. Also, in addition to this, we have an assessment of attachment by Eisendorn and Seji in 2001, who found that attachment in Tokyo was actually similar to Western studies, despite Japan being a non-Western country. This could be because Tokyo has an urban setting, as another sample in rural Japan had an overrepresentation of insecure resistant attachment. Now, because this study has been conducted in a rural part 
and there's this insecure resistant attachment type it looks to be that there is a vast number of people in having this insecure resistant type but when we look at another part of japan such as tokyo it is similar to western studies so therefore we have to also question with this the assessment whether it is that useful because comparisons between countries may have little meaning because when you look inside a country itself there's many cultures so it's actually in fact the cultural characteristics of the sample that need to be specified if we are to fully understand comparisons between countries now another limitation is that the method of assessment is biased so if you think about the strange situation that was designed by an american researcher ingsworth based on a british theory bowlby so there is question over whether these theories and assessments can be applied to other cultures so trying to apply a technique developed in one culture to another is called imposed ethic so if you think for example in the uk an insecure attachment may be determined by a lack of separation anxiety and lack of pleasure on reunion with the caregiver but in germany this behavior may be viewed differently it may be viewed as independence rather than the infant being insecure so this is not a sign of insecurity within that cultural context but it would be in the uk so a strength is that we have an alternative explanation for cultural similarity. So Bobby's argument for there being cultural similarity is that attachment is innate and universal, so similar behaviours are produced all over the world. But Van Eisendorn and Kronenberg propose a different explanation. So instead they suggest that small cross-cultural differences may reflect the effects of the mass media in which similar notions of parenting are disseminated across countries as a result of TV programmes. So that's how we have an alternative explanation to what Bowlby proposes. But Bowlby is still supported in terms of this variation because he believes that the quality of attachment is influenced by the behaviour of the primary attachment figure towards the baby. And we don't all share the same primary attachment figure, so we would expect to see some variation. If this does vary according to cultural norms, then we would expect to see some variation between countries and between different groups within a country. And this is exactly what we do see. A final limitation is that the strange situation lacks validity. So Kagan et al. 1986 suggested that attachment type is more related to temperament, so that's your personality, than to the relationship with the primary attachment figure. Now, if that is correct, then we would be saying that the strange situation simply measures anxiety and it doesn't assess attachment. If the strange situation is affected by other factors other than attachment, such as temperament, then it may lack validity as a measuring tool. So therefore, if all of this research into cultural variation has used the strange situation, and it lacks validity, then all of the findings of this research are called into question. And therefore, we might know very little about cultural variation in attachment. So we've just got some past exam questions to have a look at now. I found this one on an A-level paper one from June 2017. So it says, discuss findings of research into cultural variations in attachment for eight marks. So this is a split of three marks for AO1, so you're outlining, and five marks for evaluation. If you look at the question, it says discuss findings. So if you talk about the procedure, you will not be getting marks for that. You just want the findings, and then you want your evaluation in terms of appeal structure, of point, evidence, explanation, and link back. I would suggest at least two evaluation points if they've been fully explained. So if we have a look at the different levels now, you can have a read through those. Make sure you are understanding this because it is always similar in terms of what it's asking for on those. And your possible content here, you have Van Eisendorn at the top. Here it says credit knowledge of individual percentages and more general patterns of findings. So if you cannot remember the percentages or anything like that, it is OK. It's, you are fine just to talk about the general patterns of findings. You do not need to get bogged down and panic about learning that. More variation within countries than between countries. So if you're just stating those things, that's fine. It does have Simonella there at all, and you can use that one if you feel like you need more AO1 marks. 
then possible discussion points. These are things that we've been talking about. Strange literature may be biased towards American British culture. Samples in studies may not represent the culture as a whole. So have a read through those and try and practice that style. So I've also found this question from an AS paper 1, June 2018, that says discuss research into cultural variations in attachment. Now, this is much more broader in the sense that you can talk about the findings and procedure of Van Eisendorn for your AO1 and maybe Simonelli or Ginatel and then your evaluation. Because it's AS, it's a six and six split in terms of AO1 and AO3. You may use this space to plan your answer always do so if it does that it's normally a question where students are going to struggle or find it tricky this is an area where students do fall down because they get confused over studies but if you know your van eisendorn clearly you can understand it then you're going to be able to get the marks okay so here's your different bands just have a look through those and then here's your possible content. So it uses a lot of studies here that we haven't really talked about because it crosses over with different textbooks. And if you learn these studies, that's absolutely fine to include them. But it will have that Van Eisendorn and Cronenberg. It would really be expecting you to talk about that. And possible discussion points. These are quite similar to what we've looked at. But also what I find interesting is here, it says students may refer to positive aspects of the strange situation such as replication of the controlled conditions. So you can be critiquing that strange situation. And I think that's a really good fallback if you are struggling with the other evaluations. Try and bring some of your own in if you can. In terms of that strange situation, you know the limitations of it. You've got the imposed ethic as well, but then the strength is that controlled condition, and that is evaluative as well. So do use that. Okay, thank you for listening. I hope that's been useful, and best of luck with the rest of your revision.